It's October, so that means new iPads and MacBooks may be right around the corner. But we already have rumors about the 2020 models. Let's get into all the details on this week's Apple Call. It's gearing up to be a big month for gadget fans as Techtober gets underway and Apple isn't one to be left out. If the company does have an October event like it has done for the past five out of seven years, it's likely we'll see new iPad Pros, a MacBook, and maybe a surprise new category. Also on this week's show, we're going to dive into the new Deep Fusion update that's coming soon to an iPhone 11 or 11 Pro near you. So no time to waste, let's get started. The iPhone 11 event is old news now, so of course we have to start thinking about Apple's Sweet 16. And by that, I mean a new 16-inch MacBook Pro. We've seen quite a few rumors about this supposed new size over the past few months, which you may remember Vanessa telling you about in previous episodes. According to 9to5Mac, the new model is likely to be the same overall size as the current 15-inch MacBook Pro, with a smaller bezel to fit in more screen real estate. And that infamous butterfly keyboard that has caused current MacBook owners so much trouble? Apple analyst Ming-Chi Kuo says it's going to be replaced with a more reliable scissor switch keyboard. A new glass fiber would help reinforce the keys. As for other internals, 9to5Mac also says a supply chain report shows the latest Intel Coffee Lake H processors on board. Plus, the 15-inch MacBook might be going away completely and will just have that new 16-inch form factor. Okay, so MacBooks look like a pretty standard upgrade, but what about that new iPad Pro? With the full release of iPadOS just a few days ago, it makes sense to see a new tablet to fully take advantage. We've seen leaks supposedly showing that three-camera array like the iPhone on the back of a new iPad Pro. Now I've said many times before that I think you look pretty ridiculous if you do take photos on your iPad. But thanks to a comment on a previous episode, I might have to admit I think we may have found a good use case. In last week's show, Raimundo said, what if in the future we get a foldable iPad instead of foldable phones, which I don't think is that more useful, like to compete with that foldable notebook from Lenovo? Now this is actually a great idea. Microsoft has gone all in on a foldable tablet thing, the Surface Neo, even though it won't be released until next year. More of your comments later on in the show. The other big product from Apple we're waiting on, and I mean literally big here, is the Mac Pro. It makes sense we'll get some more details on when to expect the cheese grater's long lost cousin if Apple does have an October event. And let's not forget the rumored tracker that Apple is supposedly working on. Like the tile, you could ostensibly put this tracker on your keys, wallet or other items and be able to find them with a ping from your phone. And the fact that the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro come with that new U1 chip inside, which powers ultra-wideband technology, means that this little tracking tool could be unveiled at the next event. And finally, new AirPods with noise cancelling technology? Well, I'm not holding my breath there, but I would like to think that that's my one more thing, more so than those Apple tags. Ming-Chi Kuo mustn't sleep because I swear every week we get a new nugget from the renowned Apple analyst. This week it's iPads and MacBooks with a new display technology called Mini LED, but not this year's models that we just talked about. This is forecasting for the last quarter of 2020 and more likely 2021, according to 9to5Mac. So what is Mini LED? I'm so glad you asked. Now first up, it's not the same as micro LED. This is a different display technology that can be modular and is very, very expensive. Basically, only really rich people will be able to afford it when it goes on sale. Mini LED is a different way of backlighting LCD displays and it's supposed to be cheaper. It also promises all the good stuff, a wide color gamut, similar to OLED, good dynamic range, better contrast ratios, not particularly power thirsty, all of that stuff. Plus, no burn-in, which is sometimes a problem with OLEDs. And here's the clincher. Apple can supposedly source these panels from different suppliers, whereas Samsung has cornered the market in the size of OLED displays you would need in something like, say, an iPad or a MacBook. It's good timing to talk about mini LED because the first TV with this display technology 
is coming out this month, the TCL 8 series. So expect to see this tech thrown about quite a bit in the next year. Not literally though. Is it just me or is there almost a new iOS 13 update every day? I mean, seriously, it feels like I update my phone, a day later there's another update. Anyway, there's a lot of good stuff still to come from the operating system, including Deep Fusion. If you remember back to the iPhone 11 keynote, you'll probably recall Phil Schiller talking about this fancy sounding feature that promises to deliver even better looking photos than the phones can currently produce. The good news is that we won't have to wait too long for this feature, probably. This week, we got word of the developer build of iOS 13.1.1. Infinity, whatever, getting access to Deep Fusion. I really like how my colleague Patrick described this new feature. He said, the best way to think of Deep Fusion is that you're not meant to. And that's the thing. The computational magic to reduce noise and improve image quality all happens behind the scenes. There's no way to tell that Deep Fusion is turned on or any overrides to see it's there. It's just there. I need to preface the following explanation with nerd alert because I'm going to explain how it all works. First, with Deep Fusion, the phone takes a reference photo to help eliminate motion blur. Then it snaps three photos and one long exposure into something that's called a synthetic long photo. Deep Fusion breaks down those two images and works out what the elements are, like skies, walls, textures, and fine details like hair. Then it analyzes the photos, all 24 million pixels of them, and works out what to optimize when it builds the final image you see. I kind of feel like young Einstein after all that, so thanks for geeking out with me. And that is all about Deep Fusion, not a prog rock band, coming soon to an iPhone 11 near you. Now it's time for some comments left on the last episode of the Apple Core. This one, the best thing about when a new iPhone comes out is the previous version drops in price. I still have the iPhone 5, figure I'll get a 10 next year, then I'll wait again for the iPhone 16. Uh, when I get the iPhone 15, yeah, <laughs> I think that's a pretty good point. There's definitely gonna be some great price drops available on the new iPhones if you wanna check out on an older model, because sometimes necessarily maybe the newest isn't the best one for you. Hey, if you wanna check out how the iPhone 11 compares to the iPhone XR from last year, I've done an episode on that, so you can find out where to click right up there. And another from Zelo. Uh, okay, so if you stole that phone, you could potentially own the car too. So that is referring to the U1 chip. And in the previous episode, I talked about how ultra wideband technology could potentially be used. So say you could unlock a car with your phone. So, okay, I get it. Maybe yes, potentially you could, if you steal a phone, steal also a car, but this is so far into the future. I don't think we really know the real implications yet, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm kind of scared, but it's, it's not real thing right now, so don't worry too much about it. I'm sure we'll have it figured out by the time it gets put into a new phone. A big thanks to everyone who sent in their comments and this week's question for you, are you tempted by the rumored new iPad and MacBook Pros that might be released in October? Or are you more interested in waiting for, say, the new display technology in 2020 or 2021? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and make sure to come back next week for all the news and rumors on the Apple Core.